Good singing, everybody. Welcome to you all this morning. Morning. That's it. Morning to you here. Morning to you online. It's lovely to see you as we gather together to worship God. And, and it's great to see all the different colors coming out because we're getting into warm weather, aren't we? And that's wonderful. Davy, if you wouldn't mind coming and giving us our intimations. Thank you. Morning. Morning. Um, we have a, a note from Bill Maloney regarding the Apt Holiday Club, and he says, a recent appeal for new volunteers for the Holiday Club was less than successful and has resulted in the majority of the 32 folks signed up being experienced Holiday Club helpers. Based on previous experience, 32 is nowhere near enough to cater for around 90 children. So if anyone can give of your time during the last week in July, then please fill in one of our forms, which I have here. Your support will be appreciated, and we can guarantee you will enjoy the experience. Our first prep night will take place next Wednesday, the 7th of June, and each Wednesday thereafter. And at this meeting, we will assess the volunteer numbers and make a realistic decision on children's numbers. Rest assured that the Guardians of Ancora Holiday Club will take place in Hecklegar School in July. The only thing we don't know is how many children we will have attending. And I'm sad to report that our elder, Bill Graham, has died. Bill's funeral service will take place in church on Wednesday, the 14th of June at 12.30. So please remember Bill's family in your prayers. Thank you. Uh, this morning is uh, a particular Sunday in the life of the church, uh, Trinity Sunday. So we're going to be thinking a little bit about Trinity this morning. And I thought to get us started off moving a little bit and things, we'd learn the sign language uh, for Trinity. So the idea of Trinity is God, Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, all being one. And there's an old shield that used to say things like, you know, God is God, uh, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, the Father is not uh, the Son or the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father or the Son and the third one is not the other two. <laughs> it is. It can get a bit complicated. But to begin with, so in sign language, Trinity is represented by three fingers, and you wrap your other hand around it, and that leads to one. So you've got your three fingers, okay? And then you wrap your hand around it, and then that becomes one. So the three become one, the one in, in three. And there's a lovely uh, little way of symbolizing it. And we'll come back to that theme throughout the service. So let's pray together, shall we? Oh, Lord, we thank you that we can gather together in your name. We thank you that you give us the name Father, that we can call on you as the creator as the Almighty, as the one before all things, and yet still Father. Lord, we thank you that you have given us Jesus, the Son, and in him we see the relationship between Father and Son, between you and us, between God and humanity. We see you fully revealed, even though we may not understand it all. We see your attributes represented in the face of humanity. Your being, eternal and holy, grafted to the dust of the earth. And so the dust of the earth is now seated on, seated on the throne of heaven. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that speaks to us of Father and Son and of ourselves, that makes us the church, that binds us together, that comforts us and draws us near to you. O oh Lord, as we 
come before you this morning. We offer you ourselves. We recognize that we have transgressed the Father's ways. We have not behaved like a family with the Son. And we have forgotten you and not followed in your leading by your Holy Spirit. Forgive us. We thank you that you have said that anyone who says sorry and trusts in you will be forgiven. We thank you that you make peace with us and help us to make peace with one another. And so as we worship you this morning, lead us by your grace. Lift us up as you yourself descend so that we would be joined in the perichoretic dance of Trinity, one with another, community, whole, by your Spirit, by your love in Christ, and by your eternal fatherhood. As we join together, we then say the words that Jesus gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, take up the words of the Holy Spirit moving amongst the land in that song by Graham Kendrick, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Let's stand and sing. <coughs>
please be seated. Our uh, reading for this morning comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 4 through to 13. And there's some, some pictures with the story for this morning which we're going to use. So the words, uh, the words of the actual passage are going to be on screen, are they? No, don't worry about it. Let's do the pictures. All right. So, John the Baptist showed up in the desert and told everyone, turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. From all Judea and Jerusalem, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the river Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John also told the people, someone more powerful is going to come, and I am not good enough even to stoop down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, he saw the sky open and the Holy Spirit coming down to him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, You are my own dear Son, and I am pleased with you. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. Now, Trinity is, a, I suppose, a, a topic that, that is um, one, of, one close to my heart. I did a, quite a bit of work when I was at university on, on Trinity. And uh, there's definitely uh, a, a good amount of work out there on the complexity and on the meaning and on the nature of Trinity that I will not bore you with uh, today. And there's a, a story of Augustine of Hippo who was one of the great thinkers of the 4th century, and uh, he was preoccupied with this idea of Trinity and how to understand it, and for the doctrine of Trinity to, to be fulfilled, it took about 800 years in the life of the church. But he, uh, he so much wanted to understand this um, that he decided to take himself out one day, reflecting on the matter, a little walk along the shore, maybe as much as many of you have done, uh, a walk on the seaside in the sunshine, and uh, thinking about the big things of, of, of heaven, the mysteries of maybe even the Trinity. And as he went along, he saw this little child running up to the sand, digging a hole, and then taking a little cup of water from the sea, running down to the sea, scooping it up, running up to the beach, pouring it into the hole, and then running back again, scooping up some water, and running back and pouring it back into the hole. And then Augustine drew alongside her, and asked her, uh, little girl, what is it that you are doing? And she said, well, I'm trying to empty the sea into this hole. And Augustine said, well, how do you think that you can empty this immense sea into this tiny hole and with this tiny cup? And she answered back, and you, how do you suppose that with your small head you'll comprehend the min immensity of God? And then apparently she just disappeared. So I don't know whether the story is true or not, or just allegory, but it certainly makes the point that when we come to look at God and some of the big doctrines of God, it's hard for us to grasp what's there. And Augustine, one of the greatest thinkers in the world, with his small head, and me with my much smaller head. And of course, I couldn't possibly comment on the size of any of your heads, um, because I know you're all wonderful. But um, Trinity is, is one of these um, beautiful uh, images of who God is. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that aspect of it later on. But just to begin and get us thinking, um, this that, that has been put on here is a dreadful image of Trinity. Um, I don't know who picked that image. I do. It was Ian. Um, uh, but it's, uh, we have all these images like... Um, gas and ice and, and water or uh, three bits of um, the, the, the clover 
uh, all kinds of different things. And they all come with problems because they're all metaphors of something that is very difficult for us to understand. My, my favorite image of Trinity, and actually the one that I did some work on, is, is this. Um, it's by a gentleman called Masaccio. And there's a slightly bigger version here, so you can see the whole thing if you want. Um, uh, he's a, an artist from the 1400s. He did this in about 1425. It, it's, a, it's a piece uh, called, the, I think, the Mercy Seat, and is in, in one of the cathedrals in uh, Florence. And he's a remarkable painter because he's one of the first people to begin to do perspective. So before this, um, people were very static, you know, kind of like in icons, the 2D, very straightforward. And, and Masaccio started putting weight on people. So when they moved, it looked like they were heavy and, you know, there was distance involved. And all the stuff that we know now about perspective was drawn into his paintings. He died when he was about 28. Um, and his masterworks are not a, a huge number, but they've stood the test. This one particularly was hidden behind a cabinet because, um, you know, as churches do, things get hidden uh, even great masterpieces, who knows what's in here. Um, and then one day someone moved the cabinet and behind was this wonderful, wonderful piece. But in it we see the, a traditional setting, the seat of mercy, i.e. the cross, with Christ hanging on it, God the Father holding the cross, and then the dove looking like, a bit like a, a kind of a neckerchief or a piece of clothing, in between the, the father and the son. And what's the best bit for me anyway about this is, is what joins them all together. They're all connected. They're all one on top of another. They're all distinct. The perspective gives you the sense of them being individuals. But it's warped. So as you look at it, you see them still as flat and then as spread out. And you can't tell exactly where the spirit is, whether it's coming out of the picture or deep into it. You can't tell where the father is. There's no feet. So you don't ground the father in the picture. And with the, the son on, on, on the cross, he's very clearly on the outside. And all of this is to give this image of movement, of Christ leaving heaven and coming to earth, and the father being in the background. And all of it is wrapped up together in this wonderful idea of of Trinity, and it's very often in images like this that the church used to teach Trinity. And the best image, obviously, is the one that we had in our reading today of John baptizing Jesus. But we have all three elements. There is Jesus, God the Son, in the water. There is God the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. And there is God the Father proclaiming those words, this is my beloved Son whom I love. And interestingly, none of that was for Jesus. All of that is for you and for me. So we can see into the heart of the Trinity. We can see the love that God has in himself for us. Like we were saying last week as we looked at baptism, when we see the little kiddies getting baptized, we are seeing our own baptism. We are remembering how it was for us, God's love before we understood that love. And as we look into the Trinity, we see the affirmation one of another and his love and are invited into it. And I'll come back to that later. But for now, we're going to continue in song, Holy, Holy, Holy. So let's stand and sing.
Let's have a bit of a, a time of prayer now for others. And um, we're going to ask you for prayers that you would like prayed for. Maybe we'll start with things that we're thanking God for today. So if you want to shout something out, something that we're thanking God for, and I'll pray for it. Hey? Friends. Lord God, we thank you for friends, for company, for that sense of society and shared experience. Amen. Thank you for the sunshine. Oh, Lord God, thank you for the sunshine. Thank you that it brings out bright colors and lightens the mood, helps things to grow, and that we can enjoy longer days. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for family. We thank you for the love that's shared. We thank you even when it's difficult. We praise you for these people that we love and struggle with and enjoy and also strengthen us through a relationship with. Amen? Anything else we're thanking God for? Church. For church. Lord God, thank you for church, for this gathered community of people. Thank you for the faith that we share, and that you meet us in the midst of this palace beautiful, this blessed holy space, time together with you. Amen. What about some things that we're praying for this morning? Maybe things from around the world or things in our own lives or... Peace. 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 Ah, Lord, yes. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the world. Peace on the nations. Peace in our families. Peace amongst our friends. Peace between lands. Oh Lord, we thank you for the peace that you grant us. But we ask for cessation of war and fighting and violence. And we pray especially for places like Ukraine today and others that we can name where peace is not found. Amen. Yeah, Lord God, we pray for the folks who are grieving this morning following the accident in India. Uh, With the train, Uh, Lord, we pray for people this morning who are grieving over any accidents that have happened over these days. And when we see big tragedies, they call us to remember all tragedy. Lord, we ask for your mercy, strength and peace to those in need. Amen. What else are we praying for? Our military. Our military, yeah. Lord God, we pray for the, the men and women who serve our country in other nations who go to fight, who go to defend, who go to protect. Lord, we ask that you'd bless them, keep them safe, uh, but also give them wisdom in difficult situations and how to bring about peace. Amen. Yeah, Lord God, we pray for those who are struggling at the moment, whether it's with their bodies or their minds or in whatever way, even with poverty. And we pray for those looking after them, those who are caring, those who are watching on. Give strength and courage to face each day and a bright hope for the future. Amen. Yeah, Lord God, we pray for those who aren't with us this morning and who are on the margins of society people who we might forget. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them. Thank you, God, that you do go with them. And where we cannot go, you go. But Lord, help us too to remember to draw people in and to show your love to those around us. Amen. Lord, we pray that you take all that we are Help us to use all the things that we struggle with as material for, for developing the, the fruit of your spirit in our lives. May disappointment be used for patience and success lead us to thankfulness. May anxiety be material for perseverance. Danger is material for courage. Criticism to help us learn. Let praise be material for humility, pleasure material for self-control, and pain as material for endurance. 
we take a moment in silence to pray for people that we know, that we love, that are on our heart. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song now called uh, God Suit On, which um, I'm assuming relates to the passage in Ephesians about putting on the armor of God and things. And it's one that we, we used in the holiday club, wasn't it? Yeah. You're going to teach it, are you? Excellent. <laughs> so we used this in Guardians of Ancora last year. This is the aerobic song. We've done it in here before as well. Um, so we'll go through the chorus because the verses are mostly just dancing around, however you please. Um, so it's the sword of the spirit. So you hold your sword with two hands the sword of the spirit, and then the shield of faith. So you put your shield in front of you. The belt of truth goes around my waist. When I feel weak, you make me strong. Never back down. I've got my God suit on. Later on, the chorus extends, and it talks about the saving grace to guard my head, your righteousness like a bulletproof vest. These good news shoes, and I do not have trainers on today, are made to run. <laughs> Never back down. I've got my God suit on. And it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Got my hands in the air and your praise on my lips. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Never back down. I've got my God suit on. Okay, we'll give it a try. <laughs>
Thank you, Angela. I'm ever so grateful that you're here to do that. <laughs> well done, everybody. Well, that, that leads on nicely to the next bit of my talk, which is, as I was saying about how our God um, and Trinity uh, expresses love uh, inside of himself, God also expresses love uh, to us. And uh, one of the descriptions that's used of Trinity, another great image, is a Greek word called perichoresis, which means to dance about. So a bit like what we were doing, um, but maybe more so uh, like a, uh, uh, the kind of Kaylee dancing that goes on when you've got three people and, and you kind of dance in between and you weave around and you look at them and they look at you and you look at everybody else and it's all really wonderful. Now in the old church, in the ancient church, there used to be a dance called a, a tripodium and you can, you can gather together yourselves and I was going to grab some kids and do some turning with this and it's, it's very simple. It's you go, if you go in a circle, you go one, two, three and then you go one back again. So three, in one, yeah? Um, if you're in a pew, you can go one, two, three, and you can go one again. And um, uh, yeah, maybe this way, this way, which way, that way, I don't know. Uh, next time we can do that in it. <coughs> but this idea of three and one represented in one's uh, body. And, and for us, as, as Christians, we hold very strongly to this idea of Trinity that we don't fully understand it. It's one of those things that's better felt than telt, to put it that way. It's one of these things that actually, and um, uh, various writers have commented on this, is best found in worship than it is described in doctrine. So things like that movement of uh, three and then one, things like declaring Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the things that we do at baptism and at uh, communion and other services. <coughs> but even to follow in the ways of the Celtic Church, the Celtic Church, which we draw our heritage from and was a great uh, builder of our society, used to use Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for everything. So, in the morning, they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit the fire, and then they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit their porridge, and then they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit they're going out through the door into the world, and they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit their work, and they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit their cleaning, they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit their children, they'd Father, Son, and Holy Spirit their evenings. Right the way through, three in one, one in three. <coughs> because in it, and in our participation in it, we find ourselves drawn into God's dance, into God's love. I remember when I was a kid, we'd have uh, barn dances because at that time, before I was about 14, we lived in England and we didn't have Kayleys. So we had barn dances instead. And there was very often someone would come up and grab you and then pull you up onto the dance floor. And if you were sat next to a mate and feeling embarrassed, you'd grab them and two of you would get, and then everyone else would pull. So eventually everyone would be on the, the kind of dancing space, but they'd all be pulled up. And what we see in the perichoresis of God is Christ's hand outstretched to you and to me, grabbing us, pulling us up into this dance. And hopefully, as it affects your lives, you reach out and grab someone else and pull them into the dance. 
And in the midst of it all, we have this expression of God's love shared. God is not a, a monad. He's not a one. He's not out there desperately craving the love of humans because he's lonely. God has his company already. God doesn't need you. But because God loves you and me, and because God's love spills out of the love that is shared between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are drawn into the dance to celebrate as well. Let's pray together, shall we? Oh, Lord, we thank you that in your marvelous act of Trinity from the very beginning of creation, right the way through as we hear it revealed in Scripture, and right to the end of the universe, you are celebrating, sharing love, dancing, being joy, wonder. And Lord, you call us as your church together to be a reflection of that love. And even though we at times may stumble and trip, maybe we even stand on each other's toes, we're learning. And you're teaching us the steps and helping us with a great deal of laughter and enjoyment. Lord, thank you that as we look on your baptism and as we see Trinity revealed, as we're invited into the midst of it through our own baptism, may we find your heart and know your love and share it one with another. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, sing again our closing hymn for our time together as we take that love of God out into the world uh, with the hymn, Everlasting God.
to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Be all glory and majesty, power and authority. And may that blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with each of you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.